needs. I tell you, appreciate the, the trip that you sent us on yesterday. Got the opportunity to take the youth down and uh, have a good time there at Carowinds. And uh, I tell you, you, you think about Carowinds not being, it's not really a spiritual thing, but I'll be honest with you, probably some of us prayed more yesterday uh, than, than maybe we have in a while. I, I, maybe when it's going up that, uh, Brother Clint and I were talking about going up that one roller coaster, 325 feet up in the air before you make that turn down 81 degrees. So I, I think right around the top, there was a lot of praying going on. Right, and I, I just be, I, I'll just be honest with you, I, I offered up a few prayers myself uh, right there at the top of that thing. Brother Adam said that, uh, he said, I believe I can see Mountain City. I said, I don't see nothing, Brother. I don't, I don't even see Charlotte, North Carolina. I wasn't looking for nothing until we went down the other side. But uh, it, we, did, uh, we did enjoy that, and we appreciate you all giving us an opportunity to do that. Good to do some fun things with our youth every once in a while, and uh, we appreciate you all. You've got a Bible with you. Don't want to disappoint you. I want you to turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 18 today. 17, verse 18. Of course, it is a Wana Commissioning Sunday. I apologize if we didn't have a bulletin this morning. I neglected that until we got home last night, and it was a little bit late. Uh, I apologize. I wanted to blame that on Robin, but I really thought I better not do that. It was my fault. John chapter 17, going to read three verses to you this morning, beginning in verse 18, if you want to stand with me as we honor the reading of God's Word together. The Word of God, I think it's very important for us to remember that we're reading the Word of God this morning. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me, through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Father, it is good to be here together this morning. We're thankful that there's a good crowd that's gathered. Lord, I know that they didn't come to hear me preach this morning, but God, they came to hear you, and I pray that you would not disappoint God, I know that you can overcome any ability or inability that I may have. And Father, I believe as I'm attentive to your word, it's you speaking to the people. It's God, it's you that knows our heart, and it's you that need, has what we need this morning. God, I realize there are such hardships and hurts and heartaches in this life. And God, there's so many people in this room that... I couldn't possibly know everything they're dealing with this morning. Some's hurting, maybe over uh, problems in a marriage or with a family, maybe with a wayward child or grandchild. Some's worried this morning about their health or the health of one they love. Some may be mourning the loss of a loved one this morning. Some may have some kind of personal problem, maybe a financial problem today. God, they may be wondering where you are in all this. I pray that you would speak loudly and clearly to each one in attendance. And Lord, may we commit ourselves to be obedient this morning to whatever you may say to our hearts. We certainly thank you, Lord, for the hope, the comfort, the encouragement, the promises that we're given in Jesus. And I pray today you'd help us to Cling to them, to, more, to know more of them and more of you. Lord, when we leave this place, I pray we'd be better suited to serve thee. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. We are sharing this morning, again from John chapter number 17, and we all know this is very familiar text to you you realize that Jesus is praying. He's praying for the disciples. He's praying for those around Him. But He's also praying for you, and He's praying for me. He's praying the, uh, for those that will believe 
through their word, right? So that carries out to you and I. You believe in Jesus today. Certainly, you don't say amen. amen. You believe in Jesus, so God is talking to you. And God is talking to me. Now, uh, he, He's talking about sending His disciples out. But not only those disciples that were physically in the mix, I believe that that also applies to us. I believe that God has sent us. I don't know about you, but I believe we are the sent. I believe God wants us to go out into the world and reach the world with the gospel of Christ. Now, uh, as we look at this this morning, I, I realize that as we go out and as we seek to win the world for Christ, listen, we're not going on our own authority. Do you know that? We're not just, it's not up to the church just to go indiscriminately uh, to a group of people with some, uh, some private message or some private interpretation of the scripture, but it's very clear that God has called the church to take the gospel out into the world. That's our role, right? And as we think about Awana, how that applies to Awana, and I, I, I really, listen, I, I, I try to make, make sure that we don't call Awana a program. I don't think it's a, a program because oftentimes programs kind of tend to become self-serving. But I, I believe it's a ministry. Now, in, in ministry, you serve others. And if you serve in Awana, you have an opportunity to serve others. You're, you're serving these young folks. Not only these young people are you serving, but you're also serving their families. You, you're trying to reach that young person and trying to reach that family with the gospel of Christ. And you do that by, uh, through a variety of means. Week after week, you, you bust these children in. There are folks there as early as 5, 5.30 in the afternoon. There are folks watching the parking lot, making sure everything is safe. There are folks in the building. They, they may even get there long before 5 o'clock and start preparing the meals. They, they're there getting getting ready to cook, they know that they're going to feed 160, 180 people on any given night. Not only are they there to cook, but somebody's already made out a menu. Somebody's done gone to get the stuff to fix it with and making sure that it's there. Somebody has gassed the van. Somebody has paid for those vans. Somebody has made sure the air conditioning is turned on in the building. Somebody has made sure, many people have made sure that everything is just just right so that folks like me and Brother Tyler have the opportunity that we need to share the gospel with these young folks. And I'll tell you what, I appreciate that. I, that, that you've got everything ready, that the planning is going on behind the scenes and that, that we can then be messengers to these children. That's not only me and Tyler that are doing that, but many of you... Week after week, you share the gospel with these young folks in your classes. You, you teach them these verses and make sure that they have learned their verses. And you've seen a great number of kids come to know Christ as a result of the effort that you've made on His behalf. But you don't go into that class with your own agenda, do you? You don't do that. You don't go, you, you don't, don't, everybody don't just do what they think is right in their own eyes. In fact, everybody goes in that, uh, in, into that classroom, into that building with the same goal in mind. They're carrying the gospel message from, uh, from the ones that clean the toilets, scrub the toilets, to the ones that get to preach the gospel. All that is to carry the message. God has made us messengers. And so the message is not mine, but the message is the Lord's, right? So we consider the authority of the message. Now, my words don't carry a great deal of authority, but whenever I'm faithful to God's words, I know that I go in the authority of God. And listen, the God that I serve, He can change lives. The God that I serve, I've seen Him do miracles, and I know that He can do it again. In fact, I believe that He will do it again. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be involved in anything like that to start with. I wouldn't stand before you here today where I'm at. Look back at the scripture. It said in verse 18, As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. You find the authority of the messenger. 
messenger there. Now when Jesus came to earth, what, what did he come here to do? He had, a, he had a mission, didn't he? He, he, he was on a mission. That, and by the way, that's spelled out in letters on the side of our church trailers, Calvary Baptist Church, on a mission. We're, we are on a mission to reach folks. And, and Jesus came here with a mission in mind. He came to die for the sins of the world. He came that I might have life and you might have life and that we might have it what? More abundantly. That's what Christ came to this earth for. He had a mission in mind, right? He, he didn't come of his own accord, but he was sent out from the Father, right? The Lord knew this from the beginning of time that there would come a day that his son would be sent. In the fullness of time, he had sent his son to pay a debt that you and I could never pay. Jesus was under the authority of the Father. That's what the Bible says there in verse number 18, just like he was sent. That's what he said, like he was sent. Now, you see that the church is under the authority of Jesus, right? We know that. The book of Ephesians tells us that in 5, 22, or 23 and 24. Now listen very carefully. Husbands, we like to repeat this text to our wife, but I want you to think about this in the context of the church. The Bible says here in, in Ephesians 5, 23 and 24, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the Christ or, or as the church is subject unto who? Christ. Amen. We're subject unto Christ. That listen that means I don't go in there with my message. I don't just go in there and tell those who want to kids what I want to tell them. That, that means I don't stand here in this pulpit week after week and just tell you what comes to my mind, but I come with a message from God. Now, where do I get that message? I get it from right here. That's where your message comes from as a one of leaders. That's where your message comes from as Sunday school teachers and yours, Brother Tyler, as a preacher, the message always comes from the Bible. You stand on the authority of Christ. He has sent you. He has sent me and we stand in His authority. You see, Jesus was under the authority of the Father. The church is under the authority of Christ and the individual believer, well, I think he's under the authority of the church. Now, there may be, sometimes there are people that don't understand this, but everybody, everyone is subject to someone else, and it's that way in the church as well. If you look at the United States Armed Forces, do you find uh, 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 privates and, and lieutenants and captains and, and majors, do they just do what they want to? How many of you in this room ever served in the military? Raise your hand. Did you get to do what you wanted to? No, you didn't. You did what somebody else appointed for you to do. You worked at somebody else. You, you may have been their messenger or you, you may have been their agent. You may have been their ambassador. It's the same thing in the church. You see, the church's head is Christ and, and every believer is involved in the body of Christ and Christ leads the church. We don't just do whatever we want to do. We, don't, we have to work together. We are the body of Christ under Christ. Individuals are under the authority of the church. Our mission is from Jesus. We know that Matthew 28 tells us that. He said, and it says, Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He said, Go ye, therefore, go you, go you and me, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Lo, was he with me on that roller coaster? Lo, 325 feet too, I'm with you always, he says. And he said, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. So he gives us a message and says, take that message in my authority because all power is given unto me. The message is not mine. It's his. I'm just the agent. I'm just the ambassador. That's all you are. That's all we are as we work together. You see the authority of the messenger here. 
Not only that, but you see the arena of the messenger. Now, you find in verse number 18, as thou hast sent me into the what? Into the world, even so, he said, even so, also, uh, he, he said, even so, have I also sent them into the world. Into the world, right? We're going out into the world. Well, that's the mission field. The mission field is not necessarily the church, even though there's some work that needs to be done in the church. There's some discipleship that needs to happen here. There's some prop propagation and, and proclamation of the, the gospel that needs to happen here. But the mission field is out there. The mission field is where you go every day, where you go to work, where you're at on the street. Listen, the mission field is when you run the van out there and fill it up with kids and bring it back when you're standing there waiting on those kids to get off the van that's your mission field that's coming through the door that's your mission field that's the area that God has given you to serve Jesus was sent to the Jews primarily we know that uh, to begin with we know that he was sent to die for the sins of the world but he was sent to preach the gospel to the Jews now uh, Matthew 15 tells us this in Matthew 15 24 and he answered and said I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel he said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But listen, it says in John 1, 11, thank God, through 12, it says, and he came to his own, and his own received him not. They received him not, and because they didn't receive him now, we have the opportunity as Gentiles. If you're not Jew, you're a Gentile. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. Thank God today that Christ gave his life that you and I might be saved. You see, the arena, Jesus, Jesus arena was out there in the world. Now, when we think about Christ, we know from church history, if you study church history, if you study geography, which I don't know a lot about, but if you study that, you'll find that Jesus, he, listen, he didn't really go more than about 100 miles was his area. So he traveled somewhat, but not extensively, but the truth is, it was kind of hard to get around in Jesus' day. He didn't have a, a brand new Cadillac sitting out there that he could jump in and drive down Mississippi and help Brother Andy out this evening. You see, he had to walk everywhere that he went. So his area of travel may not have been that extensive, but he went to where God told him to do and took God's message with him. Now, the truth is, he has sent us into the world as well. Just as he went into the world, he sent you into the world. The Bible says in Acts chapter number uh, 1 verse 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I'm thankful today to know that power of the Holy Ghost. I felt the Holy Ghost this week. I've seen the Holy Ghost at work. I've seen folks get saved. I thank God that we see the Holy Ghost work. And I thank God that He still works through men. I'm not, listen, I'm not worthy, but God has worked through us anyway. He's given us of himself and he's empowered us to the work that he's called us to do the church is sent into the world we've got missions both at home and abroad back to that verse he says ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the world. So we've got a mission right here in Johnson County, right here in Mountain City. We've got a mission here in, in the state of Tennessee. We've got a mission here in the United States on North America and all the world. Listen, we can't be everywhere at one time, but God has called us to be salt and light where we are and try to reach out there to the rest of the world. And that's what you do as you sin did you give your tithes and offerings? You may not be able to go with Brother Daniel out to the Philippines, but you give him money and allow him to go. And you know whose authority he goes in? In the authority of Christ. And he gives them the gospel. Woo, I don't make you shout right there. You see, he goes out and reaches folks, and you went with him. Brother Randy went down to Mississippi. You couldn't do that, but you sent some money with him. You gave so they could serve. So you watch his website. See, whenever there's somebody else that's saved and he, and Miss Kathy updates his website, and you say, Lord, there's three people saved in the meeting tonight. I helped in that. I prayed for them. I gave them some money to help them get down the road. 
And I tell you, whenever Brother Tyler, you, you help Brother Tyler go to school and he's learning and he's growing closer to God and he's helping, the Lord's helping him and he's growing his youth group and God's using him and you can say, I had something to do with that. I prayed for him. I prayed for that man and, and I gave him some money to help him to be able to get that done. I try, you know, God, God may not call me to be a, a, a missionary over there, but, but He called me to help that missionary over there. So, so I'm going to help him all I can. I'm going to pray for him every day, and I'm going to give to him. You see, the church is sent into the world. Now, a believer, I believe, is sent to a specific place. Now, sometimes that changes. If, if we look in the Bible, we'll find that. I, I want you to think about Philip one of the, 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 the first deacons, then who quickly became an evangelist. The Bible says that he went to Samaria. I don't know why he went there. I don't know if some of the Jews may not have wanted to do that, if they considered that beneath them. But the Bible says that, that, that he went there, that Philip went there, that many were saved as a result of his ministry, and God stopped him there and put him out in the desert. And sometimes God puts you out in the desert. And you'll wonder why you're out there. You say, God, what am I doing out here? What have I done? This don't look very productive. I, I was reaching folks over there in Samaria. And I tell you, he reached that one eunuch. And being successful, it's not numbers. Being successful is one thing, and that's obedience. What has God called you to do? What has God called you to do? God calls believers to specific places. How do I know that? Well, the Bible says that. How do I know that further? I've experienced it. I stand here before you today. I never even heard of Mountain City 20 years ago. I never heard of Mountain City. The day I got saved in, in the year 2001, didn't even know Mountain City was on the map. Still ain't sure I can find it on the map. But I tell you who knew. God knew. God knew. I was getting toward the end of Bible college. And I, and I asked Brother Melvin, I, I said, Mel, I knew the Lord's going to send me somewhere, Brother Tyler, but I didn't know where. And I said, Brother Melvin, why, why am I waiting? Why, why is God not already here? I asked him, I said, Melvin, I said, Brother, am I not ready? He said, No. He said, You ready? He said, You're ready to go. He said, You ever thought about the fact that the, pe the people where you're going might not be quite ready for you yet? And I tell you, you can talk to Brother Michael and how everything worked out. That's exactly what it was. God put specific people in a specific place for a specific time. God's done that throughout the years. He's brought me here. He's, he's, he's brought Brother Tyler here. Brother Tyler was very reluctant to begin with to come here. He's gave that testimony right here. Sometimes you've got to get out of your comfort zone to do what God wants you to do. Did you know that? You can't always go where God wants you to go and stay where you're at. Sometimes you've got to be willing to move. Sometimes you've got to be willing to move. You see the authority of the messenger here, but also the arena of the messenger. Now, I'm going to close with this real quick, and I'm not going to be long. I'm going to shock you. I'm not going to be long. Verse number 19. Verse number 19. You find the attention of the messenger. This is the most important part. This is the most important part. You listen to this. And, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself. Now, as you read that, you know what that word sanctify means. Now, you, you, sanctify normally means uh, set aside and, and put away sin. Now, in Christ, in His place, there was no sin to be repented of. There was no sin to be forsaken. But he says, for, he, he says, verse 19, For their sakes I sanctify myself. So what he's saying, for their sakes I set myself apart. He said, I set myself apart. And he goes on to say that they also might be sanctified through thy truth. That you and I might be set apart through the truth. Now when you think about sanctification in the life of a believer... That means to be separated from sin. To be set apart from sin. Now, we're setting apart this Awana group today. These Awana leaders today. We're setting them aside. And we're going to commission them 
But I can't separate them from sin. You know that? I can't do that. Now, let me, I, I think that every believer is accountable to each other. And if you're a member of this church, you're accountable to the church. And as a leader of the church, in a sense, you're, you're accountable to me. As I am also accountable to you. Now, I'm not the Holy Spirit. I'm not the spiritual police. I'm not going to ride around and keep tabs on you. I don't do stuff like that. But if I knew something that was in your life that should not be, I'm going to come and see you. If I know that you're leading in this church, if you're singing in this choir, if you're teaching Sunday school and you're involved in Awana, you're leading in Awana, you need to live a life that's right before the world. I know you ain't perfect because why do I know that? Because I know I'm not perfect. Sometimes I think I do, but Michelle usually gets me pretty straightened out on that. I know you're not perfect. But we have to be serious about separation. If you read over there in James chapter 1, verse 27, it says, Pure religion undefiled is this, that a man visit the widows and the orphans and keep himself unspotted from the world. I may have transposed a word or two right there, but he says keep himself unspotted from the world. That's the number one thing I can do for my one group. You know that? Is to keep myself unspotted from the world. Is to do what's right before the world. Because if I behave like the world, if I'm out here a, a gossiping and carrying on and backbiting and, and, and cursing and, and, and living in a wrong manner, and then these little kids come into the Awana group and they, lo and behold, who's their leader? It's the guy that will wear cussing the ref at the ball game last week. And he's going to teach me. I'm going to tell you what, you, you can't lie to these kids. That's right. They're smarter than we think they are. Right. Yeah, and they're looking for something real. They're looking for something real. And I think we ought to show them something real. If you've got Jesus living in your heart, you've got something real to offer them. You have something real that you can offer these kids week after week after week. Jesus said, By this will all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another. The most important thing that we can show these kids is love. Week after week, some of them, bless their hearts, they live in situations that I wouldn't wish on nobody. Some of them, I worry about them when they go home. This might be one of the only places they feel safe. This might be one of the only places they can get their belly full. This certainly is probably the only place that many of them ever hear anything out of the Bible. Anybody ever cracks about Anybody ever prays for them? When you sit down, you know, I have to pray for these kids. Pray for them by name in that class. It does. So you know some of those kids, they probably never had anybody yes, pray for them by name. Yes. Lord, just help little Johnny. I know he's having a hard time. I, I, know, I know he has a hard time at school. He has a hard time at home. God, would you encourage that boy? Pray for him like that. Listen. It's a serious thing to be set apart for the gospel. You're the messenger. Let's pray together. Father, we are thankful this day. Lord, we're thankful for your spirit that you've given us when we became born again. God, that you work in us each and every day. And God, you work through us every day. We realize that, Lord, this is serious business to minister to other people. Lord, these children and their families are very important to you. God, you want to see them say, I pray that you would help us to work in a, a, and live in a manner that would be pleasing in your sight. God, that we'd have opportunity to share the gospel and that you would add weight to our words, that we would share your word and know that we're doing it with your authority. God, I pray that you would work in our midst this morning. If there's one here that's struggling with something, I pray they might be at this altar today. And God, I pray you'd meet them there and give them what they need. If there's one lost, God, I pray you'd draw them to you. Lord, I pray that even now they may jump out of that seat and come to this altar. Say, Jesus, I need to be saved. God, it's as simple as that if we believe. 
confess our sin, put our faith in Christ, I believe we can be saved. What if there's somebody needs to make that decision? I pray you draw them to you in Christ's name. Amen. Stand to your feet. Do you need to be at the altar today? Do you need to be at the altar? You hear lost without Christ this morning? Maybe you just take a step out and say, Preacher, I need to be saved. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Do you need to take a step out this morning? Preacher, I need to be saved. I need Jesus. I want this Jesus you're talking about. Any like that today? Leaders, maybe you're leading Sunday school, Awana, you drive a van, you're in some ministry here at the church, you work at the clothing closet, you're in the care ministry, whatever it may be, you serve in some capacity. Maybe you need to come to the altar today and just say, Lord, help me to live a life that's pleasing to you. Lord, I believe the most important thing I can do for these kids is to stay right with you. God, I want you in my heart and my life, and I don't want to do anything that's unpleasing. Maybe you need to come today. Several are coming. You might need to come too. Lord, I don't want to do anything that would bring reproach on you. I I want to be able to be used. I want this ministry to move forward. I want to see souls saved. I want to see lives changed. struggling with something this morning you say preacher I've, I've been having a hard time every head's going to be bowed now and every eye's closed would you lift your hand and say preacher would y'all pray for me I see one hand see a few more you put it right back down preacher I'm just struggling with something I see a few more would you just pray for me I promise you I won't call you out and I'm not going to ask you a thing but we'll pray for you see any like that this morning preacher I'm just having a hard time would you pray for me any others Jesus knows all about it, preacher, but I want you to pray. Lord, would you be with these that raised their hand this morning, no matter what battle they may be facing in this life. Father, I pray that you'd just give them a peace of knowing that you're still on the throne. God, that the scriptures tell us in Romans 8, 28, you always have the best interests of the believers.